Better late than never, it's the Razer Death Adder V2. Obviously a very popular mouse, but what's new with it compared to the other Death Adder Elite that was also super popular? Well, a few things, and uh, I'm gonna tell you what they are. Very simple box, not too hard to get into. Comes with a bunch of stuff you probably don't care about. Unleash your true potential. Signature from the CEO. Oh my God, I can put this on my motorcycle helmet visor. Cool. There's a hair in there. Someone's been here before. Well, immediately this feels quite light compared to other death adders. Okay, this is a nice looking mouse. It's kind of matte plastic on the top with a sort of rubberized side, gnarled on the sides a bit. Feels pretty light. I got a scale here without the cable. Coming in at 78 grams. This, I know the scale is not perfect, it's not, but relatively speaking, if that says 80, 82, let's see what it is relative to this other elite. See, this box has, a, has the green inside. I kind of like that more. Oh yeah. This thing is a chunk compared to this. At least 16 grams heavier. That's pretty impressive considering the chassis is almost identical. Like looking at these side by side, the shell shape is very similar, especially on this side of the center line. The most notable difference is over here. Now on the existing Elite, some people were bothered by the way this curves out, especially if you had smaller hands. Um, so this is kind of a safer design. It's less extreme over here, and this will probably be more comfortable to more people, especially those with small hands. Other than that, I guess these DPI buttons are kind of farther down, a little more out of the way than these ones. They're, it's a different button design. Uh, the wheel looks slightly different. There's just smaller bumps on it than this one. It's not like a Logitech MX Master wheel where you can free spin it, like the MX Master 3S, which is obviously not even a gaming mouse. It's nice because it's ratcheted at lower speeds, but then you can flick it and it'll free spin. That is not going on here. And you probably maybe wouldn't even want it to. This is just designed to easily go through your weapons with your scroll wheel if you're the kind of person who goes through your weapons with your scroll wheel. It doesn't feel that different. It may be a little more force on it than the last one. While we're clicking things, the left and right mouse clicks. They're actually different. The Elite used to use mechanical switches, Omron switches, that were rated for about 50 million clicks. The V2, though, uses optical switches, which I believe are lower latency, and they're rated for 70 million clicks. And this is what they sound like. Another change on the V2 is the cable, actually. So you already had a braided cable, which is all right. It's, it's a fine braided cable on the Elite. You can see the cable is slightly fatter on the V2, and that's because it uses their SpeedFlex cable. SpeedFlex, it's very supple. Oh my goodness. It's, it's just almost frictionless. Frictionless. <laughs> the spirit of the design here is low friction, so it's not gonna drag as much when you're, you know, you have your low DPI setting and you're but that's not the only thing interacting with the table. There's also the feet on the bottom and the V2 has new and improved feet. These standard feet are way draggier, <laughs> they say in comparison. And in fact, I mean, it's hard to tell because this is also lighter, but it does feel a little uh, more frictionless. These are PFTE feet. That's a material that's used in non-stick pens. Uh, it's used to coat like, um, piping and containers for corrosive chemicals because it's non-reactive. On a side-by-side -side comparison that I saw on Razer's own website, they said that the new one has eight buttons while the Elite had seven buttons. Um, I don't know if I'm missing something here, but it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the eighth button on this thing? Hit me up in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what a dog. Give me that SpeedFlex cable and PFTE skates. It actually is noticeably. I don't know. I don't know what to attribute the smoothness to, the weight, the cable, or the feet, but it's noticeably nicer. 
and of course, RGB. Sharp. So that's the outside of the mouse, but there's also some changes on the inside because this uses a new and improved sensor, uh, the Razer Focus Plus sensor. It has a DPI of 20,000 dots per inch, up from 16K on this peasant mouse. It also has a tracking speed of 650 inches per second, which is, I mean, that's pretty damn fast. You're gonna have to be moving your mouse at 37 miles per hour, 60 kilometers an hour to uh, exceed that. It also has a 50G acceleration, but the cool thing is that the sensor is paired with an SOC inside, which allows some cool other features, like, well, three other cool features. The first cool feature is something called smart tracking. So the sensor is self-calibrating relative to whatever surface it's on. So you'll get the same consistent liftoff distance without having to calibrate the mouse every time you set up in a different location. If you go from your mouse pad to a glossy table to something else, because you know, you're on the road with your mouse going to land parties and stuff, and you don't want to mess around just because you don't have the same battle station conditions as usual. Feature number two is called asymmetric liftoff. So what this is, is it's a distance that you can set in the Synapse software where the mouse kind of turns off at a certain distance, uh, the liftoff distance when you lift it up. Because again, if you're playing with a low sensitivity and you're going like this, you're gonna be lifting the mouse up a lot. So you can set it to say two or three millimeters to deactivate as you lift it. But uh, if you did not have asymmetric uh, liftoff distance, that would mean that when you put it back down, it turns back on at that same distance of say two or three millimeters. But you may not want that actually because then on its way back down, it'll start reading when you're still kind of far away from the table and then your mouse cursor will actually move a little bit before you pat it back down. So what you want is asymmetric. That's where it's three millimeters to take it off the desk, but it doesn't activate again until a millimeter off the table. So you're gonna have your cursor just stay where you want it to be, less drift, and that is awesome. And feature number three is motion sync, which is basically aligning the polling rate of the mouse and the host PC so that the information is arriving at the same time, so there's reduced input lag from that. It's kind of like, if I can, VRR for polling rate. Is that a stretch? And finally, the other thing that is different about this mouse is onboard memory again because of the SOC. Previous Elite had no onboard memory, uh, so that meant that you had to always install the Razer Synapse software, which you may not want because it's kind of annoying and clunky. Um, with this, you can have up to five profiles saved on device. So yeah, you just set up the Synapse software once when you first get it, and you can change all the lighting profiles and even macros and all stuff like that. Then you save that profile onto the mouse so you don't have to open up that software anymore. You can even uninstall it for a time. And then you can bring your mouse to other places and tournaments and your profiles are still on there. But if you wanna adjust the lighting and add new macros, you're gonna to have to install that software again. If you're into RGB stuff, this is of course in the ecosystem of Razer Chroma, uh, which means it can sync with all your other peripherals, all your other Razer stuff, your keyboard, all the lights in sync together. And of course with Philips Hue. So you could be watching a movie or playing a game and your, your mouse lighting will sync up with that too. Insane. What a world. What a time to be alive. This is the um, button on the uh, bottom, on the SD face button. I'm, yes. Oh my God, it has to. You're right. Andy, you're a genius. We found the eighth button. It's the profile selection button on the bottom of the mouse. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So should you get the V2? Particularly, should you get it if you already have an Elite? Oh God. Um, I would say, yeah, if you don't mind this $69.99 price tag, nice. Um, it's a worthy upgrade. It's you know 20 grams lighter, that's significant. Especially if you're the type of person who stopped using Elite because it was too heavy, um, relative to all the other much lighter wired mice that exist today. Um, if you wanted to love the Death Adder, but the feeling wasn't good in your hand because of the, the shape, especially if you have small hands, then then this is, this is great, especially if you're a palm grip player. I mean, it'll work for claw grips and fingertippy people as well, but I, th I think give this a feel. Give it a lift. See if you like it. it. It might be worth it. It might be your next mouse. So thanks for watching Short Circuit today, guys. If you like this video, give it a like. If you really, really like it, give it a subscribe. And um, be sure to stay tuned. If you guys hit us up in the comments and tell us to cover the new Razer Basilisk 
ultimate or ultra or whatever it's called, maybe we'll do that too if enough of you uh, yell at me. Ah! See you next time. <laughs>